Hello everyone, welcome you all in my YouTube channel. This is the second video of the series AZ500 exam. Coming to the questions. Coming to the question. Your company has two offices in Seattle and New York. Each office connects to the internet by using a NAT device. The offices use the IP addresses shown in the following table. The company has an Azure Active Directory tenant named Contoso.com. The tenant contains the user as shown in the following table. And this is the trusted IPs. Question is, for each of the following statement, select yes if the statement is true, otherwise select no. If user one signs in to Azure from a device that uses an IP address of 134.18.14.10. User 1 must be authenticated by using a phone. Second, if user 2 sign into Azure from a device in a CTEL office, user 2 must be authenticated by using Microsoft Authenticator app. Third, if user 2 sign into Azure from a device in the New York office, user 2 must be authenticated by using a phone. And correct options would be if user 1 signed into Azure from a device that uses an IP address of 134.18.14.10, user 1 must be authenticated by using a phone. This statement should be yes. If user 2 signed into Azure from a device in a CTEL office, user 2 must be authenticated by using a Microsoft Authenticator app. This statement is no. If user 2 sign into Azure from a device in the New York office, user 2 must be authenticated by using a phone. This statement is also wrong. Coming to the next question, your company plans to create separate subscription for each department. Each subscription will be associated to the same Azure Active Directory tenant. You need to configure each subscription to have the same role assignment, what should you use? And the options are option A, Azure Security Center, option B, Azure Policy, option C, Azure ADPIM, option D, Azure Blueprints. And correct option would be option D, Azure Blueprints. Because just as Blueprint allow an engineer or an architect to sketch a project's design parameter. In the similar way, Azure Blueprint enables cloud architect and central information technology groups to define a repeatable set of Azure resources that implement and adders to organization's standard pattern and requirement. Blueprints are a declarative way to orchestrate the deployment of various resource templates and other artifacts such as role assignment, policy assignment, Azure resource manager template, and resource group. Coming to the next question, you have an Azure container registry name registry1. You add role assignment for registry1 as shown in the following table. Which user can upload images to registry1 and download images from registry1? Upload images, user 1 only, user 1 and user 4 only, user 1, user 2 and user 4, user 1, user 2, user 3 and user 4. Download images, user 2 only, user 1 and user 2 only, user 2 and user 4 only, user 1, user 2 and user 4, user 1, user 2, user 3 and user 4. And correct options would be Upload images will be allowed only for user 1 and user 4, while download images are allowed for user 1, user 2 and user 4. Coming to the next question, you have Azure subscription. You create an Azure web app named Contoso1812 that uses an S1 app service plan. You plan to create a C name DNS record for www.contoso.com that points 
to Contoso 1812. You need to ensure that user can access Contoso 1812 by using HTTP as colon double slash www.contoso.com URA. Which two actions should you perform? Option A, turn on system assigned manage identity for Contoso 1812. Option B, add a host name to Contoso 1812. Option C, scale out the app service plan of Contoso 1812. Option D, add a deployment slot to Contoso 1812. Option E, scale up the app service plan of Contoso 1812. Option F, upload a PFX file to Contoso 1812. And correct options would be, option B, add a host name to Contoso 1812. And option F, upload a PFX file to Contoso 1812. And the reason for that is option B. You can configure Azure DNS to host a custom domain for your web app. For example, you can create an Azure web app and have your users access it using either www.contoso.com or contoso.com as a fully qualified domain name. To do this, you have to create three records. A root A record pointing to Contoso.com, a root TXP record for verification, a C name record for www name that points to the A record, and for F, option F to use HTTPS, you need to upload a PFX file to Azure Web. The PFX file will contain the SSL certificate required for HTTPS. Coming to the next question, you have an Azure subscription name sub1. You have Azure storage account name S1 in resource group name RG1. Users and application access the blob service and the file service in S1 by using several shared access signatures and stored access policies. You discover that unauthorized user access both the file service and the blob service. You need to revoke all the access to SA1. And the solution provided for that is you create a lock on SA1. Does the solution meet the goal? And correct option would be no. Because to revoke a stored access policy, you can either delete it or rename it by changing the signed identifier. Changing the signed identifier break the association between any existing signature and stored access policy. Deleting or renaming the stored access policy immediately affects all of the shared access signature associated with it. Coming to the next question, you have a hybrid configuration of Azure Active Directory. You have an Azure SD inside cluster on a virtual network. You plan to allow user to authenticate to the cluster by using their own premises Active Directory credentials. You need to configure the environment to support the planned authentication. And the solution provided is you deploy Azure Active Directory domain services to the Azure subscription. Does this solution meet the goal? And correct option would be no. Coming to the next question. Your network contains an Active Directory for us named Contoso.com. You have an Azure Active Directory tenant named Contoso.com. You plan to configure synchronization by using Express Settings installation option in Azure AD Connect. You need to identify which roles and groups are required to perform the planned configuration? The solution must use the principle of least privilege. Which two roles and groups should you identify? Option A, domain admin group in the Active Directory. Option B, security administrator role in Azure AD. Option C, global administrator role in Azure AD. Option D, 
user administrator role in Azure AD? And option E, enterprise admin group in Active Directory. And correct options would be option C, global administrator role in Azure AD. And option E, enterprise admin group in Active Directory. Coming to the next question, you create an Azure subscription with Azure AD Premium P2. You need to ensure that you can use Azure Active Directory Privilege Identity Management to secure Azure AD roles. Which three actions should you perform in the sequence? And actions are discover privilege roles, sign up PIM for Azure AD roles, consent to PIM, discover resources, verify your identity by using MS. And correct three actions in sequence would be consent to PIM, second, verify your identity by using MFA, and third, sign up PIM for Azure AD role. Coming to the next question, you have a hybrid configuration of Azure Active Directory. You have Azure SD inside cluster on a virtual network. You plan to allow user to authenticate to the cluster by using their on-premises Active Directory credentials. You need to configure the environment to support the plant authentication. And the solution provided is to deploy an Azure AD application proxy. Does this solution meet the goal? And correct option would be no. Coming to the next question, you have Azure subscription name sum. You have Azure storage account name SA1 and resource group name RG1. User and application access the blob services and the file services in SA1 by using several shared access signature and store access policy. To discover that unauthorized user access both the file service and the blob service. You need to revoke all access to SA1. At the solution provided is, you regenerate the Azure storage account access keys. Does this solution meet the goal? And correct option would be yes.